Howdy, Dan Williams with SurviveOutdoors.com. If you're unfamiliar with us, we've been around about 20 years. We have a wilderness medicine site called SurviveOutdoors.com. We focus on wilderness medicine, um, educational topics as far as safety topics in the outdoors, how to keep you safe, and we also do some gear reviews. Um, so please check us out. Today we're going to talk about mosquito and tick repellents and we're going to discuss a little bit of deception and advertising. Hope you can save a buck and get the best mosquito repellent uh, that you can find. The first one out of the box is DEET, diethyltolumide, and that was developed in 1944 by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, again, gosh, probably about 10 years after that to 15. It was approved by the CDC. Its initial um, formulation was used for the U.S. military, and then it got approved for commercial use across the United States. It comes in a variety of different percentages, and that's what we want to address. So it comes from 7%, 15%, 30%, up to 100% DEET. There's a lot of misconceptions about uh, DEET in the, uh, in the spray that you've been using probably for years. So here we have the most common brand is by SC Johnson off and in here both of these scratch that this one is off active sweat resistant and it says good for Zika dengue or West Nile virus and this was deep woods off and it says for ticks, and then it also talks about mosquitoes. And then we have this deep woods off with the mosquito on the front, long lasting protection. The first one here, the active, has 15% DEET. These other two with look totally identical except for the color. One is 25% and the other one is a whopping 25%. The tick can cost about a dollar more than the other one, and they literally both have the same amount of ingredients. So it behooves you not to check out the amount of DEET in the bottle and see how the advertising tries to pull you in to grab the certain one that's more visually appealing. So Repel came up with, it says 100 insect repellent, it's actually 98% DEET. So what does all that mean? So how the diethyltolumide works, it basically masks carbon dioxide and lactic acid coming off of the body. And so the mosquito or tick basically is not going to locate you. At tw the CDC recommends about 30% DEET. And they also recommend no, no DEET under two months old. Well, Survive Outdoors, we recommend basically no DEET under six months old. Um, and the percentage of DEET is really interesting. The vast majority of people I talk to think that the higher percentage of DEET is stronger. And that's not the case at all. The 100% DEET and 25% DEET does the exact same thing. The only difference is, is that the 100% DEET should last uh, about 12 hours versus the 25% DEET. You should probably respray every four to six. And if you're under 15% DEET, then you probably should do it every two hours. So for kids, like this Cutter All in the Family insect repellent, uh, it has 7.0% DEET. And I recommend that for little tykes and kids. That would be totally fine. When you go to a higher percentage of DEET, the skin, and it's going to be on your skin longer, then the skin's going to absorb more. And it's also important to note that usually in 24 hours, your body basically urinates out anything that's absorbed. And studies show it only absorbs about 6%, and that's not bad at all. But at higher concentrations, there's been some evidence that it can affect the kidneys, especially in children if you're going to use 100% DEET. That's why it is not recommended in children at that percentage. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing we found out in, um, in the field of medicine about in 2010, we learned that 
dengue fever, the mosquito that carries dengue fever, is basically insensitive to DEET. Doesn't work. Uh, you'll, you can search that and you'll find a lot of different areas on the web where it confirms that. And this bottle this came out, this can came out oh, about 2017 and it says Zika, Dengue, or West Nile. Well, not true. If you're going overseas, you're going to the Philippines, Asia, Africa, they, they have the mosquito that carries dengue fever. Um, do not bring off. Now up here in Northern Illinois, I have treated about three cases of West Nile in about the last 15 years. And this does work very well against West Nile and the Zika mosquito. It's a different species of mosquito than the dengue fever. The next um, ingredient that is really, really good is we're talking about permethrin. This is a Sawyer brand. It has 0.5% permethrin in it. Now permethrin came out in about 1973 and actually when it first came out it was used um, in, for scabies and head lice and I prescribe a lot of scripts for elamite which comes in a shampoo as well as a cream. It has a higher concentration of permethrin the over-the-counter version is called NYX, N-I-X, which I've been seeing some resistant cases over the last five years for head lice. It doesn't work as well. So it's also a little gee whiz fact. It is the 410th most common prescribed medication in the United States. So it's used quite a bit. And with permethrin, you're going to spray that on your clothes. And what this does, which is different than DEET and the third one we're going to talk about, it actually kills the tick. Um, and you're going to spray it on your clothes beforehand. Uh, a lot of hunters really like using this, especially turkey hunters. They're going to be sitting on the ground in the spring, and it will kill the tick. Uh, they're going to be sitting in, like, dead leaves in the spring, and that's where ticks actually lay their eggs, a lot of times in dead leaf clutter. So an excellent product. It will stay on your clothes for about two weeks if they're not washed. Uh, and that's also very helpful. The other thing you can do too is spray them on cotton balls. Let the cotton balls dry. Put them in a little container like a toilet paper tube. And you can lay those around your yard in various areas. And mice will then go grab the cotton balls, make a nest. The picaridin will scratch that. The permethrin will get on the, um, the mouse or the rat's fur. If they get a tick, Tick's going to die. Eventually, if you do that spring and fall for about two years, you're going to decrease the amount of ticks that you have around your house tremendously. So it's a really good move to use the permethrin that way too. <clears throat> the uh, third one, and it's the one that I use frequently, is Picaridin. P-I-C-A-R-D-I-N. This is called Proven Insect Repellent. And it is 20% picaridin, and they tout it with mosquitoes, ticks, black flies, and other listed insects. Now, picaridin was developed in about, in, gosh, when was that? I want to say in the late 90s by Bayer. And in 2001, it was the, uh, manufactured in Australia for the Australian Armed Forces. It didn't get approved in the United States to about... 2005, I believe, 2006. I may be a little off on that year. And 20% is the recommended for a picaridin. Now you can put this right on your skin. It has, uh, it's colorless, it's odorless. Kids like this a lot better than the spray with the uh, DEET in it. It has less skin sensitivity than DEET. I've had a few cases that came into the clinic where the kids would have a rash. Uh, from a sensitive reaction from the DEET. So this is really an awesome little product and um, it's the one that I really recommend with uh, Survive Outdoors. The um, one thing I wanted to talk about on the ticks is what ticks do is they quest. It's called questing. They'll climb up a blade of grass or a limb and they'll literally just have their front legs out ready to grab on a mouse, a deer, a human. And 
it is that behavior that where the permethrin is going to come in handy that they, they are just not going to want to attach on you okay as opposed to the DEET and the uh, picaridin. So this is really beneficial for the ticks and it's going to they're going to fall off and not want to be any part of you. <clears throat> now I want to mention eucalyptus and citronella candles. Um, for all my natural individuals out there I hate to break the news to you it is just is not effective uh, when compared to these other products at all. Um, if, especially if you're in a heavy area with ticks or mosquitoes, I would not recommend that. Um, there is a product by Avon I need to mention called Skin So Soft. Skin So Soft I recommend for one bug only and that is flying midges. Up in northern Wisconsin, northern Michigan, northern Minnesota, they're called noceums. They're very tiny little flying insects, probably twice as big as a pinhead and they have a life cycle of about three weeks and when they bite you you most likely will have a hypersensitive reaction you'll get a little wheel a lump redness and they itch like hell i'm telling you so uh, i get it probably 15 to 20 people in the clinic every spring from biting into flying midges but usually by end of may first of june they're completely gone but they are a pain uh, one other product is called um, IR3535, and that's been out a few years. That is also a really good product. It's not DEET, it's not picaridin. However, there's a red flag on that where it does cause a lot of eye irritation. And um, you've got to remember being a little kid and your dad was taking you fishing, you'd spray that off and it'd get in your eyes and it'd burn for a little bit. It really turned you off of it. Well, this is even worse than DEET. So yes, it works well. I'm sure I would get questions about it, but it does have a pretty high uh, level of eye sensitivity. Um, so that's our products. That's it, the three main ones. If you have any questions or you got some recommendations, leave them in the comments below. And until our next video, keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind, and stay safe, guys.